That's a good Taylorsville crappie there. There you go, we'll take it. This week on Kentucky Afield, spring fishing is here, and we're taking advantage of an early opportunity. That's a tournament fish right there, boys. That's crappie fishing. Next, we'll explore another opportunity that's just over the horizon, spring turkey hunting. Then, we're going to spend a day in the life of animal care at the Salado Wildlife Education Center. It's all next on Kentucky Afield. Kentucky Afield. Every week, Kentucky Afield brings you features on hunting and fishing across the state. What a nice fish. An opportunity to hopefully get that bird in play. Hey, we got another one over here. There he is. Ooh, a nice one too. Boy, he's healthy. What do we got? <laughs> that was awesome. Got the first help. Barely made it out in the field. Got one big small mouth. Very nice. Double point. They're in there. There they go. Look at that joker. Woo. <laughs> That's a good one. Eh? Look at that. Whoa, this is a good one. That's better than good, Chad. Hello, and welcome to Kentucky Field. I'm your host, Chad Miles. Join us as we journey the Commonwealth in search of outdoor adventure. The weather's getting nice and the fishing is heating up. And one of the more exciting species to target this time of year is crappie. We're out here on Taylorsville Lake. You know, we got two or three days of warm weather. That means it's time to do what? What are we doing today, Brian? Crappie fishing, Chad. Crappie fishing. I mean, Taylorsville Lake is known to have huge numbers of crappie. You guys do a lot of fishing together on the bass side, but crappie fishing is something you enjoy as well. Yeah, I spend all winter long up here crappie fishing. That's uh, my go-to in the winter when we're not bass fishing. These fish are shallow all winter. Yeah. I yeah. mean, water temperatures can be in the low to mid 30s and you can still catch them shallow. Well, I asked Jared, I said, hey, I want to go up and catch a couple of crappie up at Tesla Lake. He goes, well, I got your guy. And he goes, if I had to lay a bet on somebody running up there and catching quality crappie in a short amount of time, it'd be you. So we'll see how it works out. Thanks, Jerry. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure. Well, you're the boat captain today. I understand you're the guide. You're the guy who knows where the fish are at. Let's go get them. Let's do it. Let's go. Brian, with this wind, you want to try to pick it up out here, then work in, or just no. pick it up on the timber here? Yep. All right. There we go, guys. What you got? Well, you may have your first keeper crappie on there, right there. This one's a little light, nine and a half inches. Uh-oh, another one on. That's not a keeper. I got a bluegill here. You know, everything's in here feeding on these minnows. Get a crappie? Yeah. I don't think he'll keep. You got him. Another little one. Both of you guys got crappie. I'll tell you what, the crappie are breeding at Taylorsville. What do we got here? Right species. Wrong size. One thirty-second ounce jig heads, and then just a tube jig, black and chartreuse. There you go. I like to crappie fish the way I bass fish. These crappie, you know, they'll get up on the mud just like a bass will. They're eating shad just like a bass does. And this is fun. I tell you what, this is very typical for Taylorsville Lake fishing. You know, you get out here, cover a lot of water catch a bunch of fish. You know what, when these fish get up there to where they make that 10 inch limit, people will be taking them home. But the number of fish in here to catch, available to be caught, tremendous. Crappie fishing is really, truly one of those things that you just need to fish them however you feel most comfortable because you can catch fish. The simple fact is, is you put a bait in front of them and crappie's feeding, they're probably gonna eat it, aren't they? Oh yeah, they're gonna eat. Finding the right kind of fish that are feeding, that's where the trick comes in. 
these crappie that are seven to nine inches long. Millions of them, aren't there? Yes, thousands. You feel some of them, but a lot of them are just knocking a little bit of slack in the line. See a little loop get knocked up in your line, and you know, hey, you better be ready. There we go, guys. Uh -oh. oh, we got us a large one now. Wrong species. Oh my goodness. Hey, the bass are biting too. If we can't get the crappie to go over 10 inches, we'll uh, try bass. <laughs> <laughs> that was our first over 10. <laughs> uh. All right, Brian, we're about out of water, my friend. Keep going or? You wanna go out there, see if we can't get on that deadhead? Yeah. So when we say deadhead, what we mean is basically what we got right here in the water an old tree, there's the root wad, and it's out there submerged where you can't see it, but the fish still love it. Any cover will hold them. That might keep. Might keep, we'll go check him. We'll see. Hey guys, we can go home now. We'll have to have fish flavored broth. <laughs> it's an eater. Get him up here. Bye George, he'll eat. Got him. Pretty good fish. I don't know if it'll keep or not. We'll check it just to be sure. Oh yeah, he's 10 and a half inches. Right there's one. Got him. Got him. Come here. Double. Bringing them in two at a time. All right. Welcome to Taylorsville, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. Home of the white crappie. Yours is close, Chad. When you say close, he's literally 10 inches and a 16th or an eighth. Chad, Jared, Brian, your turn. <laughs> Not frying pan worthy. There you go. That's a good one there. That should be an eater, but we'll measure him. He's 10. Jared's got one. Good one? Yeah. Real good one. An ice one. That is what they call a fish sandwich. You got it? You hung up. I got it. Oh, you got a good one? It's a giant. Eater. That's a good one. Woo, hey, look, I measure him. That's a good Taylorsville crappie there. There you go. We'll take it. Had to catch 30 to get here, but hey, I'll take that too. We may fill a skillet after all. Got him. Choke that jig. Oh, yeah. That there is wow, that's that's taking a, line. That's a big one there now. That's a tournament fish right there, boys. That's a tournament fish there, Brian. It's a good one. Here we go. Oh, what we got here? Is this a crappie? Ball guy. Or crappie. That's a crappie. What we got here? Wow. That's a good crappie there. Look then. at that now. That's a good fish right there. I tell you what, we caught so many fish today. I mean, I don't know how many caught. We may have caught 50 or 60. It did take till right toward the end to start catching something like this. Brian, that fish you caught was 13 inches or better, wasn't it? Yeah, that was a that's good a fish. good one. You know what, guys? There's no reason for cabin fever when you can get out here catching crappie like this. Doesn't get any better. Turkey season is right around the corner. And you know what that means. Tune in next Monday night, 7 o'clock, for our live question and answer show all about turkey hunting. You can catch us on YouTube, Facebook, and fw.ky.gov. Now, let's watch a turkey hunt from a few years ago to get ready.
Well, it is May and we are turkey hunting. This year, the season come in late. You can tell by how green everything is. That this is a very late turkey hunt. Probably not gonna hear much gobbling and be lucky if we see a strutting tom. But that doesn't mean you still can't hunt these turkeys. I'd love to get another bird. I've got one this year, so I got a tag left. I'm gonna set up in an area where I've been seeing a bunch of turkeys. We're gonna do some light calling, but you gotta be ready to go at any point in time. When you got a tag in your pocket and one to burn, I can't let the season go out. I gotta give it one more shot, so hopefully we can get a bird today. weather turned out to be perfect for a field hunt. We got a lot of sun, we've got some wind. So we thought we'd come set up on a place that I'm pretty familiar with. We hunted last year. Right and we've hunted at numerous hunts this season. Never got a chance to take one, but this is a great location where these turkeys walk these field edges or right in the woods, right to this point. So we're set up, we've got two decoys out, and hopefully Big Tom comes slipping by. not 60, 70 yards away. Okay, there he is, there he is. It's definitely a gobbler. I was not expecting to hear a gobble this afternoon. He's more interested in filling his belly than he is our decoys right now. He's in range. I just got to get the perfect shot opportunity. All right, when this bird goes behind this tree, I got to move. I got him now. Now hold on. Now he's behind the tree. My God, what? It's middle of the day. We just set our decoys up. I'm thinking, oh, it's gonna be a beautiful afternoon hunt. I'm checking my phone. Haven't made a call and a gobble right there. We haven't heard a gobble in two weeks. This is like a good long beard. I mean, it was dragging a beard coming through there. I'm excited to go take a look. Wow, look at this beard. I'll tell you what, it is a full grown, mature bird. We hadn't heard any gobbles in a long time. We thought if we'll set up in their travel corridor and we know where they've been roosting, hopefully we can intersect them. Didn't think they were gonna come through at two o'clock in the afternoon. And thank goodness this joker gobbled and let us know he was coming. Finally came in and gave us the shot. We're able to put this bird down. I'll tell you what, later on in the year, it's all about persistence and knowing those travel zones. I wanna give special thanks to the Hearst Farm for allowing us to come out here and chase these turkeys. We have had a blast. And I'm looking forward to getting this bird home, getting it cleaned up, getting it on the table.
good news if you're looking for something fun to do during spring break. The Salado Wildlife Education Center, located in Frankfort, Kentucky, is now open. Go to fw.ky.gov and click on Salado. Salado is a wildlife education center located here in Frankfort, Kentucky. It was established by the Department of Fish and Wildlife 25 years ago to educate the public about hunting, fishing, and outdoor conservation. Here at the center, we see about 55,000 people annually from Kentucky and across the United States. Salado Wildlife Education Center is a small zoo setting that has Kentucky native animals only. It's a place where people can come and see these animals up close in a safe environment and learn more about their natural histories. What people like about coming here is any questions that they need to know or inquiring, you know, they're getting informed of and so they leave here with more education concerning the animals. We care for over 300 animals here at the center. People can expect to see bear, bobcats, eagle, Turtles, frogs, snakes, elk, deer, bison, turkeys. Just a wide variety of Kentucky native animals. The center is open from March through November to the public, but Animal Care is here 365 days a year taking care of the animals. We do training, enrichments, health checks, feeding, cleaning, and medication. These are just some of the things we do on a daily basis. One of the very first things I do when I come to work each morning is drive around and check on all the animals and make sure everybody seems healthy, make sure all the fences are intact. It looks like everybody's standing up, grazing. Everybody looks good, all four of them are there. All the fences look intact. Checking on the elk, everybody looks good. And we'll check on them throughout the day too, just to make sure nobody's limping. We prepare diets specific to our animals' needs, so carnivores get a carnivore diet, and our herbivores and omnivores get either an herbivore diet or a mix. Let's go wake up a bear. One of the main attractions we have here is our black bear. Everyone loves to see him. We've had him about 22 years. He weighs 670 pounds. All of the behaviors we train for are for medical purposes, from body condition and health checks to more advanced procedures like vaccinations and blood draws. All of the training is done voluntarily by our animals so that we can keep track of their health without causing any unnecessary stress to them. After we get him up and moving, we begin our training. Training usually consists of having him put his paw in a paw chute. We warm up his paw with a heating pad. When it's cold, the heat really helps swell up those veins so they're a little easier to find. We also part his hair with warm water to make it easier to see. While he is allowing us to take blood samples and work with his paw, he gets special snacks that Brad will feed him through the fence. So he will get some of his favorite treats like lettuce and grapes, and he'll get those only for blood draw trainings. After blood draw, we go into other trainings. Mouth. We'll check his teeth. Good. Up. Oh. Check out his paws and his paw pads. Boy. Sit. We do a variety of different trainings, and it's all for health purposes. Before we put our bear out, we always go in and clean up his enclosure, put out a little bit of food for him to find. We use honey, berries, and other types of fruit. We'll hide it around his enclosure so that it motivates him to forage and find that food on his own, gets him moving around, gets some exercise. We have two bobcats here. One is a male and one is a female. Everybody loves the bobcats. Just like the bear, they're probably the number one and number two animals that people come here to see. They are totally opposite. They have different personalities. One of them is very playful and is not very food motivated for training, and the other one is a little bit more standoffish, likes to do his own thing, um, but he is very eager to train every day. 
Good morning. This is our female bobcat. She's about six or seven years old. She is being playful this morning. She's ready to get to work. And this is our male bobcat. He's about nine years old. He's getting ready to get to work too. Scale. He's getting a weight on our female bobcat here. They're trying to get up on the scale. We weigh them twice a month to keep up with their health. They're both full grown now, so we like them to maintain their current weight. Tail. So we put tail on cue because it helps us keep track of, you know, if they have any intestinal parasites, any redness or swelling. Very good. They are trained to sit so that they can stay still on a scale or inside of a crate. The bobcats are trained to stand up and put their paws on the chain link so that we're able to look at their paw oh. pad conditions and look at their stomachs. All of this training really helps us be on top of their health without any stress to them. They love training. They get lots of reinforcement for doing the things I ask them to do. Enrichments are activities that keeps them mentally and physically stimulated. Sometimes it may be music. Sometimes it could be bubbles, a bubble machine. So today she's getting a box with a plain sheet inside. She seems to really be enjoying it. So what I'll do is just leave the exhibit door open so if she wants to head out there. While we're finishing up his training outside, she can do that. Val. Good boy. All done. The Living Stream is an outdoor aquarium that holds multiple variety of fish. You can go in and see it as if you were looking underwater at the fish themselves and see their environment. It's like an exhibit version of Elkhorn Creek or Guest Creek. It has native fish you'll find in those creeks. We've got crappie. Bluegill. Largemouth bass. Red ear. Catfish. Long nose, short nose, and spotted gar. Drums. We just have a wide variety of fish species that you'll find in Kentucky. What we're going to do now is feed the fish in the living stream. We usually start by taking a dip net and getting about four bucketfuls of minnows. We got them all over here now. Hopefully they're hungry. Generally, when we take our minnows to the living stream, they eat like piranhas, but today they're not as active and they're not eating. With water temperatures as cold as they are, they're gonna eat slow. Doesn't look like too many of them are hungry right now, but got plenty to eat. What is an eight will survive, and they'll have them a few days from now. Our bald eagle is another animal people love to see. People ask us often why he can't be released. He was injured from a power line. He's non-releasable because he cannot fly. We're gonna to try to weigh the eagle today. We typically weigh the animals twice a month just to keep a good look on their weight. When we weigh our eagle, he knows exactly what we want because he's done it so much. We generally just point and he goes and gets on the scale. Four thousand two hundred and eighty-five grams. Good bird. There's always a lot of things going on around here. Sometimes it's a big job, sometimes it's a little job, but we always stay busy. I really enjoy working here, working with the animals, and it's something that I know that I'm going to enjoy when I come back to work tomorrow. We have a really good work dynamic here. It's nice to have a team of people that you can count on. We never know what we're gonna show up to from a day-to-day -day basis. The animals behave differently through the seasons. But I love working here, and it's nice to know at the end of the day, when we leave here, we know that we've provided the best care possible for these animals. Now let's check in and see who else has been out having fun in this week's Ones That Didn't Get Away. Check out Ridge Lee holding up his first bass of the year that he caught in Jefferson County. Congratulations. 
Here we have a beautiful smallmouth caught by Heather Howe on Dale Hollow Lake. She knows what to throw at them there, a four inch swim bait. Nice job. Here we have Jeffrey Scott Wells who's caught another Barren River Lake monster blue catfish. This was his second largest fish ever at 45 pounds. Here we have seven year old Blake Taylor who took his first deer in Bell County this year during the modern firearm season. Nice job. Just a friendly reminder, the hunting and fishing license here in Kentucky start on March 1st. Make sure you pick a new one up before you get out. And make sure you join us next Monday night for our live turkey question and answer show. And remember, hunting and fishing on private property is a privilege. Always ask permission and thank the landowner. Until next week, I'm your host, Chad Miles, and I hope to see you in the woods or on the water.